so this is the the, the one that have have been discussed with you all uh, on Monday. Okay, where we have investor, which is A, acquired equity shares, which is voting uh, voting rights, which is ordinary share capital. Okay, kalau kita nak determine control, kita always look on the ordinary share capital. Sebab equity share ni is is general. We also have preferred share capital. Okay, preferred share capital is not the item that we're gonna to use, that's gonna be used to determine whether controlling interest is present or not. Kita always look on the ordinary share capital. So if I still become B. So saya kata hari tu, okay, dan you all pun mungkin ingat lagi. So bila investors acquired more than 50% of the voting shares of investee, A atau investor become a holding company of parents and then investee become a subsidiary. So when we combine parents and subsidiary, we get a group account. Okay, so group account ni nama simple. But kita tak guna perkataan group. Kita guna perkataan consolidated financial statement. Ataupun nama lain ni group financial statement. So kalau sometimes soalan guna, kalau soalan guna perkataan group, by right you should know group is the stand for but consolidated. Okay, so the things that you must aware here is that group, when you are dealing with consolidation, a group is always comprises of holding and subsidiary only. Okay, uh, ni. Holding dengan subsidiary saja yang akan form group. Tak masuk associate, tak masuk simple investment. Hanya holding and subsidiary. Uh, jangan nak mana-mana kita associate dalam group. Group hanya comprises of these two, holding and subsidiary. Even a uh, holding and subsidiary is already formed as a group, okay? But both are separate entities, physically and legally. Okay, maknanya as subsidiary boleh sue okay, holding company. Okay, because they are on their own cuma in terms of disclosure to show that there is element percent element of controlling interest holding over subsidiary, therefore holding need to prepare the consolidated financial statement which show their financial position or financial performance with regards as a group instead of as stand alone okay so because of the separate entities so both need to prepare their own financial statement kalau tak ada their own financial statement macam mana kita nak prepare group account macam nak combine financial statement holding dengan financial statement subsidiary so they still need to prepare their own financial statement as well as maintain their own accounting records. Okay, so uh, this is something that uh, I need to highlight, we are going to highlight further, okay, with regards to the controlling interest, okay. So if you refer back to the definition of the control, they did mention about uh, control directly or indirectly. Okay, so control ni, element of control yang present ni, it can be directly or indirectly. So, kita nak kena determine sama ada the control that that present is come from direct controlling ataupun indirect controlling. Okay, so dia kata where in the case where we have more than one investor, Okay, bila one investor ni uh, identify as holding company, ada dua holding company. Okay, uh, cuma kalau ada dua holding company, with regards to the consolidation, hanya satu saja company yang boleh control investi. Okay, so parents kan, nama dia holding company ataupun parents. So, saya selalu namakan kat sini adalah Mark. Okay, holding ni Mark. 
subjek adalah anak kandung. Kalau asosiat anak tiri ataupun anak angkat. Okey. So mak dengan anak sahaja akan jadi keluarga, family which is group. Okey. So relationship antara mak dengan anak. Okey. Dia berjadi direct or indirect. Okey. Ini direct ataupun indirect. Okey. Macam itulah juga. Okey. Direct and indirect ni macam Uh, sama anak je biological anak, anak sendiri ataupun anak kandung ataupun anak 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 kandung ataupun anak tiri ataupun anak angkat lah. Okay, indirect ni. Okay. So, kata kalau ada dua mak. Okay, hanya satu mak saja yang ada full autonomy kepada anak tersebut. Okay, satu saja yang boleh control investi. Okay, now kita nak focus on to understand The element of of direct and indirect controlling. Okay, so based on this example, okay, so you can refer to the slide because I'm going to show you, okay, in detail. Yang ni ada direct saja because I want also discuss with you all the indirect effect. Okay. All right. So please refer to the slide, your own slide. Okay, if you look at here, okay, let's say kat sini ada A, acquired ordinary share in B, okay, 80%. Maknanya ordinary share capital dia adalah more than 50%. So, bila kat sini 80%, so automatically B become a subsidiary. A become a holding company. Betul ke kelas? Betul ke kelas? Betul ke? Uh, bila A acquire ordinary share capital in B more than 50% so A has element of control over B. Okay. By 80%. So A become a parent atau holding company. B become a subsidiary. Okay, if you look at here, A, relationship between A dengan B, this we call it direct. Nah, direct kan? A, control B. Ni dia panggil direct controlling. Okay, macam mana kira direct controlling ni? Inilah formula yang saya bagi last Monday. Percentage, num your number of shares acquired. Okay, by A ataupun acquirer divided by number of shares owned by B. Lepas tu times 100. Okay, then you get direct controlling. Ini direct ya. Yeah? So dalam case ni is the percentage is already provided. So Alhamdulillah tak payah kira. Because some of you, bisu kira, dikira salah. Salah percentage, maknanya kira salam lah jawapan tu salah daripada A sampai ke Z. So, percentage yang diguna dah salah. So, semua salah. Okay, yang tu yang tanda-tanda boleh fail lah. Okay, and then at the same time, okay, tadi A acquire B. So, B become a subsidiary of A. So, dalam, dalam slide dia kata A, has direct controlling over B. Okay, betul? Direct controlling. At the same time, B also acquired C. Okay, B acquired C. Okay, sebanyak uh, 60%. Which is order share capital dia more than 50%. So, dalam kes ni, B become a subsidiary of B. So B become a holding company of C. Ha, nampak tu kelas? Dah, dah start dah complicated kat sini. Okay. Alright. So relationship B dengan C is still direct controlling because B control C directly. Okay. 
So we have two direct controlling. A, control B, B, control C. Okay. So dalam kes ni, look at here, we have two. Ada dua mark. Mark kat sini. B ni mark kepada C. A mark kepada B. Ha, yang ni yang saya ibu tadi. In some of the cases where we have more than one holding company, only one holding company can control investing. Okay. Ha, so B ni kita panggil intermediate parent. Intermediate parent. Ha, intermediate lah sebab dia tengah-tengah. Saya panggil intermediate parent. A ni kita panggil dia ultimate di paling atas. So ultimate parent. So which parent can control the investi? Ada satu saja parent. So which one? Agak-agaknya yang mana kelas? Ultimate ke intermediate? Yang mana agaknya yang boleh control investi? Ultimate. Siapa? Ultimate. Ultimate. Uh, ultimate lah yang paling kuasa Kan uh, So yang paling atas ultimate So ultimate dengan immediate Ultimate actually the one Who who, who will have the Controlling interest over Investi. In the case where Kita ada dua mark. Okay ada dua Parents atau dua holding Company. Okay so Clear regards to controlling uh, Direct controlling So the B has direct control over C, A has direct control over B. Okay. So dalam kata lain saya kata okay B adalah subsidi kepada A, C subsidi kepada B. Okay. So soalan saya. Okay. With regards to this diagram. Who is C? Who is C? Siapa C? Who is C class? Who is uh, C? Maybe not specific macam associate. Can tu ke mana? Uh, tak. Tak masuk lagi associate. Hmm. Based on this diagram, who is C? Siapa C? C is a subsidiary of B. Betul? Betul. Betul? Uh, subsidiary kepada B. So my next question, sebab C adalah anak kepada B. So based on that answer, my next question. Is C a subsidiary? Eh C, bak. saya sebut C, saya tulis. Uh, tengok saya tulis C, saya tulis S. Maknanya saya punya mindset dengan tangan saya tak synchronize. Okay. Maknanya otak saya fikir lain, tangan saya buat lain. Okay, is C a subsidiary of A? What do you think? C anak kepada B. Soalan saya, adakah C ni anak kepada A juga? Rasa-rasa? Hmm. Tak. Kenapa tak? Sebab B beli C. B beli C. Sebab you look at on the direct controlling. Tadi definition MFRS3 kata control directly and indirectly. So mana indirectly dia? Ha, inilah direct dia. Okay. A kepada C. Dotted line. Nampak? A, B dengan A direct. B dengan C direct. Betul? Ha, siapa yang ultimate parents? A. Siapa yang akan prepare consolidated statement? A. Okay. Ha, so siapa yang holding kat sini? The ultimate holding? A. So A akan record B sebagai subsidiary. So A ni ada kaitan tak dengan C? Ada tak kaitan dengan C? Tak ada kan? Tak ada kan betul? Tak ada. Tak ada. Tetapi dalam standard dia kata the controlling can be in terms of direct or indirect controlling. So kat mana indirect? 
So maksudnya walaupun kita nampak secara zahirnya C ni tak ada kena mengena dengan A. C hanya kena mengena dengan B. So maknanya A dengan C ni indirect. Ha, ni kata indirect controlling. Kenapa indirect controlling? Sebab relationship antara A dengan C adalah melalui B. Betul? Betul kelas? Melalui B. Ha, so macam mana kita tahu indirect control ni wujud? Sebab kita, dalam, kita guna default ULT, eh, default by definition. Default by definition of what? Of subsidiary. So dalam standard dia kata sekiranya B ni adalah anak kepada A so apa-apa anak B juga adalah anak A. Ha, package. Okay. So B is subsidiary of A. At the same time B ni ada juga anak dia. So automatically indirectly Anak-anak B juga adalah anak kepada A. Boleh? Dia bercakap kiri lah kan. A kahwin dengan B. Betul? B ni janda. Ada anak. So anak B anak B pun akan jadi anak kepada A. Betul tak kelas? Betul? Betul? Betul. Indirectly. So indirectly ni maknanya is based on default by definition of S. So whatever subsidiary of Uh, of B is also become a subsidiary kepada A. So if C is a subsidiary of A, the answer will be yes. Kenapa yes? Default by definition. So C is a subsidiary of B dan B is a subsidiary of A. Okay. Uh, so definition by subsidiary. Okay. So soalan sekarang ni. Kalau direct controlling, kita guna formula. Number of share acquired by A divided by number of share owned by B. Kita pun dapatlah 80%, dapatlah 60% because direct. How about indirect? So indirect, pengiraannya adalah kita ambil sebab C ni is become a subsidiary to A through B. Okay, through B. So nak kira dia punya percentage of control kita ambil percentage A over B, 80% multiply with B and C. So 80% times 60% dapat berapa kelas? Dapat berapa? Ataupun 0.8 times 0.6, lalu times 100, you will get? 48%. Okay, 48%. Okay, 48%. Okay, ha, mesti ada, tak ada kena you tiba-tiba ter trigger. Eh, percentage of control dia tak sampai 50% pun. Macam mana dia jadi subsidiary? Nampak tak kelas? Tak cukup kan? Tak. Hmm. Ha. Dia kata nak jadi subsidiary mesti more than 50%. Ni tak cukup ni. Tapi is a subsidiary. That's why saya kata sebab dia indirect controlling dia adalah default by definition. So yang ni tak bukannya element that you can use that you are going to use to determine whether C is a holding company uh, C is a subsidiary to A ataupun tidak. Bukannya based on the percentage. Ya yeah, ingat ya yeah, untuk indirect controlling. Direct, yes. Ha, direct, mesti. Tak cukup 50, jadi associate. Okay, tak, tak, not, not greater than 50%, maknanya dia akan jadi associate. Kalau more than 50%, dia baru subsidiary. But for indirect controlling, kita hanya default by definition. So, sekiranya B ni anak kepada A, so anak B juga adalah anak kepada A. Clear? Clear kelas? Okay. Clear yeah, madam. Bila kita kata B is a subsidiary to A and then C is a subsidiary to B. So bila subsidiary ada certain portion which not acquired by holding. Yang mana that portion is belongs to siapa kelas? 
Belong to siapa? Portion ordinary share capital which not acquired by holding. Siapa punya portion yang tak acquired tu? Siapa punya? NCB. NCI. A acquired shares of B 80%. Ada lagi 20% kan tinggal tak acquired. Siapa punya 20%? NCI, non controlling interest. Itu juga dengan B dengan C, B acquired C 60%. Berapa NCI? 40%. Bila kita dah determine dia sebagai subsidiary Wajib determine what be the NCI. Remember? Uh, sebab for the subsidiary, maknanya portion which not acquired by holding should belongs to non-controlling interest. Sebab subsidiary saja ada element of controlling. Alright? Uh, so, ingat? Alright. So, begitu juga dengan C. Kita kata jangan tengok percentage. Di default by definition. C is also subsidiary kepada A. So kalau controlling interest dia adalah 48%, so NCI dia berapa kelas? 52%. So setiap ni ada NCI. Boleh? Boleh kelas? Ada soalan? Boleh. Ha. Faham? Ha, pentingnya NCI ni sebab inilah percentage yang kita nak guna untuk determine goodwill or bargain purchase. You must know first what be the percentage of control, what be the NCI. So in order to determine the percentage of control, you have to identify, tengok dulu sama ada controlling itu adalah direct ataupun indirect. Alright, any question? Is there any question? So far no medium. Okay. Then, okay, we are already clear with direct and indirect. Then we also identify the, okay, how to determine percentage of control for indirect and whether indirect controlling entity is hold subsidiary or not. It depends on default by definition. Okay. Then we go to group structure. Okay, group structure, okay. Uh, ni just uh, for your information je lah. Saya highlight lagi sekali. Pair holding company may control directly or indirectly over subsidiary. Macam kita bahas tadi dah. Okay. Uh, holding company control A and B. Um, then, uh, B directly. B control C directly. But A control indirectly over C. Okay, so this is explanation for direct and indirect control that you can read by your own. Okay, so let's move on to the types of group structure. There are three, fellow, vertical and mixed group structure. Okay, so with regards to these three different group structure, okay, fellow subsidiary will be examined in your final assessment. Final exam or final assessment will be based on fellow subsidiary. Soalan dia mesti fellow subsidiary. Dah bocor ni soalan bocor. Okay, test one will be based on mixed group structure. Jangan tanya lagi nanti, okay. Test one, soalan dia adalah mixed group structure. Test two, vertical group structure. Okay, I repeat. Final, fellow, test one, mix, test two, vertical. How about group project one? Group project one will be either vertical or mixed group. Salah satu. Vertical or mixed group structure. Clear? Clear? Clear, class? Clear, madam. Clear, madam. Uh, I already uh, provide here the explanation what you mean by fellow, vertical and mixed group structure. Okay, please go through this explanation. Okay, now I want to show you in terms of diagram. Okay, where from the diagram, we can see clearly the, the, opening, the difference between each types of group structure. Okay. 
So, hmm, tengok. Alright. Balik. Alright. Okay. Apa maksud fellow? Ramai anak. Contohnya, A acquired ordinary shares of B 70%. More than 50%. So, B is a subsidiary of A. A is a holding company to B. At the same time, hanya dia ada arrow lah. Okay, nak indicate A, siapa acquirer, siapa acquiree. So, A acquired B. So, A holding company, B adalah subsidiary. Okay, percentage more than 50%. Okay, percentage ni based on ordinary share capital. At the same time, ataupun 2 tahun kemudian, ataupun next year, A acquired pula C. Okay, 80%. So, A, a C become a subsidiary of A. And then, uh, next month, A acquired pula D. Okay. A sebanyak 60%. So, D is also a subsidiary to A because the percentage of control for all these three entities are more than 50%. Okay, ini adalah group structure berbentuk fellow. Okay, dia macam payung. Kembang-kembang kembang lagi banyak entiti yang more than 50% lagi kembang dia punya skirt dia. Okay, ini skirt dia bagi kembang. Okay. So, ni bentuk fellow. So, dalam final nanti bila you draw the, the diagram, so you kena you kena buat ni secara, orang kata, secara apa, the diagram ni akan guide you. Okay, because from the diagram you will identify is there any direct, indirect, percentage of control, who is the subsidiary, who is the associate. Okay, senang nampak. Clear. Okay, so kena, kena pandai draw diagram. Okay, dia akan bantu you a lot. Okay. Ingat, kita nak beat the time. Bukannya setakat jawab soalan sahaja. Okay. Ini fellow. Clear eh? Ada satu mak. Ramai anak. Okay. Uh, next, kita pergi kepada vertical. Vertical actually similar with the example, the recent example that we have discussed. Iaitu A, acquire B. Okay. Uh, 80% B acquired C 60% uh, Example tadi uh, Itu adalah group structure vertical Okay So Apa yang paling obvious In these two different group structure adalah Dalam fellow Kita cuma ada direct 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 Betul? Betul? Betul kelas? Betul. Dalam vertical, kita buka setakat ada direct. Ni direct. Ni direct. But we also have indirect. Uh, between A and C. Because C become a subsidiary to A through B. Uh, so this one we have indirect. Nampak? Kalau fellow direct sahaja. Okay, kalau vertical kita ada direct and also indirect. Okay, boleh? So, B adalah subsidiary kepada A. C juga adalah subsidiary kepada A. Nampak? But through indirect. B direct, C through indirect. Kalau fellow A jadi subsidiary. is is a subsidiary to A directly same goes to C and also D. But untuk vertical, only B is a subsidiary through direct controlling but C is a subsidiary to A through indirect. Okay, kenapa kita nak sebut C is a subsidiary kepada B? Sebab kita now kita talking about a group. So, siapa yang main? A. So, from the perspective of acquirer. Okay. Oh, saya tak tunjuk lagi kan tadi. Ah, saya tunjuk lagi. Yeah. Last last slide. Okay. Ini vertical. Then we move on to the last one. Mixed group structure. 
Okay, mixed group pula. Okay, dia ada A sama juga B. Ha, tu saya ingat sikit lah sebab dia lain sikit bentuk dia. Okay, A acquired B. Pastilah 80%. So, at the same time, A and B. Dua-dua. Mana ada tadi? Tadi dah ada macam ni bentuk. Tak ada kan? Ha, so, dua-dua. A dengan B acquired C. A acquired C 10%. B acquired C 60%. Kalau you tengok secara roughly, you can nampak mix ni adalah gabungan vertical. Plus direct. Okay. Saya tak kata sini uh, fellow. Kalau fellow dia mesti subsidiary. Sebab ni 10%. 10% is simple investment. It can be also 20%. It can be associate. So kata direct. So A tadi kalau vertical tadi A dengan C adalah indirect. Betul kelas? Betul? Betul? Betul. Kenapa saya? Macam mana dah ada indirect ni? Sebab B adalah subsidiary kepada A dan C adalah subsidiary kepada B. Betul? So apa relationship A dengan C? Ha, itu datang ni elemen vertical. Di syarat dia mesti C mesti anak kepada B. Okay? So ni ada indirect. Indirect controlling. Ni direct, B dengan C direct, A dengan B direct, A juga ada direct controlling over C. Bukan setakat A dengan C ni ada dua relationship dia. Pertama direct 10% dan juga indirect. Ni, A dengan C. A dengan C ada direct dan juga A relationship dengan A dengan C through indirect. So, bila nak kira percentage of control C, okay, kita akan ambil direct plus indirect. So, okay, berapa direct dia? 10%. Berapa indirect class? 80% kali, kali? Hmm. 60%. Ah, 60%. Dapat berapa kelas? 48. 48%. So kita buat sini 48%. So berapa sebenarnya percentage of control dia? Bukannya 48% saja. Is 58%. Okay. So adakah C subsidi kepada A? Soalan saya adakah C subsidi kepada A? Ya. Berapa ya? Sebab sebab dia more than 50% Alah. and also dia ada apa default by definition tu. Ya. Jawapan yang kedua tu betul. You tak kata more than 50%. You cannot base on this figure ya class. This figure doesn't reflect how you decide. Okay. Uh, whether C is a subsidiary or a to A or not because dia ada elemen indirect. Dia direct sahaja. Okay. Indirect dia tak. So why C is, a, is also a subsidiary kepada A because default by definition because B is a subsidiary kepada A therefore subsidiary of B also become a subsidiary to A. Faham? Faham class? Um. Uh, you cannot base on 58% ni salah. It's more, it's more on the definition of subsidiary. So wherever anak kepada B juga akan jadi anak kepada A. Okay, default by definition. So because of C is also a subsidiary kepada A. So kita kena determine juga what be the NCI of C. So NCI will be 42%. Any question? Any question class? No madam. Okay. Alright. Next. Okay. So it should be example. 
Okay. Alright. So before we go to example, let's look at the uh, this one. Okay. Last slide. Okay. Consolidation method. Okay. Because now we are move on to how to prepare the consolidated financial statement because we know that in order to prepare consolidated financial statement, okay, the responsibility to prepare usually falls under holding company. Mana responsibility to adalah pada holding company. Holding company yang akan prepare the consolidated financial statement by combining its own financial statement with its subsidiaries okay uh, because they more have more they might more have more than one subsidiary okay what are the method to be applied method to use method that we're going to apply okay in order to prepare the consolidation adalah acquisition method apa maksud acquisition method Business is viewed from the perspective of the acquirer. Maknanya, acquirer based on perception of acquirer. So, bila acquirer nak prepare consolidation, acquirer which is holding company, kena tahu apa relationship dia dengan A dengan B, what is the relationship dengan C. Sebab tu kita nak tahu tu direct ke indirect ke what be the percentage of control, what be the NCI. Okay. Kenapa based on perspective of acquirer? Because acquirer yang akan recognize cost of business combination. Iaitu berapa amount purchase price yang dia akan bayar kepada acquiree. Ha, sebab holding company yang akan bayar. So dia tahulah berapa yang dia bayar. So dia yang determine the cost of consideration transfer. So therefore, the preparation of consolidate, consolidated financial statement must come from the holding company's view. Okay, so before we move on to the next yang up sikit level, okay, so when you get the question, the first thing you kena wajib identify dulu siapa holding, siapa subsidiary. Sebab acquisition method ni, you kena tahu dulu siapa holding. Lepas tu, you kena tahu pula bila date of acquisition. Short form dia adalah DOA. Ha, yang ni saya baru letak tadi masa discussion uh, my first class. So, dalam slide you tak ada. Okay, so acquirer maknanya you have to determine who is the HC. Okay, holding company. Date of acquisition. Short form dia lah doa kan ha, Nanti kan saya sebut doa You offer angkat tangan baca doa Bukan macam tu ya Doa means D-O uh, Date of acquisition Nanti kita ada lagi D-O-D Date of disposal Okay ha, so slowly lah kita discuss satu-satu Okay and then we also You also need to know what be the fair value Net asset of subsidiaries Dan juga what be the net as a fair value of the non-current liable, non-current but non-controlling interest, NCI. Fair value untuk net asset dan juga fair value of the non-controlling uh, non interest. Okay, uh, kita akan discuss in detail nanti uh, macam mana kalau soalan tu bagi nilai fair value of NCI Macam mana kalau dia tak bagi macam mana nak kira. Ha, semua kita fikir dah dia punya possibility. Okay so kita mesti or, kita mesti kena prepare, be prepared for whatever circumstances. Okay number four determine goodwill or bargain purchase. Ha, ni last kali. Lepas dia tahu siapa acquirer, what be the GOA, what be the fair value or subsi uh, fair value net asset of subsidiary and what be the fair value of the non-controlling interest baru boleh determine goodwill or bargain purchase. Okay, kita stop kat sini. Okay, nanti next class kita akan terus sambung dengan this one. Okay, example satu.